but essentially what it means that Vlad, as specifically as a human being, and every other existing shareholder of Robin Hood had a vested interest <gasps> in killing the GME thing as fast as possible so they can raise as little as possible of this emergency funding. Vlad and Robin Hood were concerned that if the price goes too high, the people who borrow the shares will default and couldn't pay back the shares. In that case, Vlad takes the hit. Robin Hood takes the hit. I was born in Bulgaria, a country with a financial system that was on the verge of collapse. At the age of five, I immigrated with my family to America in search of a better life. Welcome to another video. My name is Tom Nash, former senior financial analyst, now a full-time YouTuber with a sexy radio voice because of my cold. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep this video brief, short, and to the point. Now, I think that based on what we saw from the hearings, I'm of course talking about the GME GameStop hearings, we learned a few things. We learned that Vlad was a young boy in Bulgaria multiple times. We learned he appreciated every single question he was asked. And we learned most of the politicians had no idea what they're talking about and clearly was just interested in some screen time, apart from a few good ones that actually knew what they're actually talking about. But mainly it was a shit show. Uh, however, there's one thing that did not come up in the hearings, which I feel is extremely important, and that is the conflict of interest that Vlad and Robin Hood had in this case, which nobody is talking about, and I think it's important to highlight it. Let me explain what I'm talking about. As you know, Vlad came on TV and he basically said, well, they raised, of course, they being the DTTC, raised the collateral requirements because of the volatility of the stock, and in order to meet the collateral requirements, we had to restrict buying. And that's his story. He's sticking to it. However, if you remember, he actually said, and it was widely published, that they actually raised a lot of money, emergency funding, to meet that demand. Now, what happens when you raise emergency money? Imagine you need a loan, and you need it super, super fast, like tomorrow. You're going to pay a high rate of interest. If you're desperate, if you need the money right now, you pretty much will pay any amount. That's exactly the same thing that happened with Robinhood, and yet nobody's talking about it. I want to show you an article from the New York Times which seems completely innocent, but highlights this question exactly. Let me show you. Well, this is the article. It says Robin Hood in need of cash raises $1 billion from investors. Seems completely innocent. And I think it was published a while ago, February 1st. So it's out for three weeks. Seems harmless, seems innocent, right? We all know this. But if you scroll down over here, you'll find something interesting. I want you to take a look at this paragraph right here. Investors who provide new financing to Robin Hood will receive additional equity in the company. So far, so good. The investors will get that equity at a discounted valuation tied to the price of Robinhood shares when the company goes public. It means that the people who finance this emergency funding got a discounted term. Basically, it means that whatever the share price is going to be on the IPO, these guys will get shares. Their money will be converted to Robinhood shares at a lesser valuation than the IPO. It's a benefit because they raised the money so quick. Now, so far, so good. There's nothing illegal about it, right? However, think about it this way, and this is an important thing we need to understand here. When Vlad was raising the money, how much money exactly did he need? Well, he would probably want to take as little as possible. Why? Because if he takes as little as possible, the less discount he has to give to these investors. Why? Well, think about it this way. Vlad is pretty much broke. I mean, he's not really broke, broke, but I mean, he hasn't met the real money yet. His money event is going to happen on the IPO. This is where he gets mega rich during the IPO. The IPO is his exit event and it's 100% legitimate. I have no issues with it. Now, what happens if people are now giving you money in advance and they're going to get more shares instead of you? Basically, that essentially dilutes you even more. So essentially, by giving out shares right now at a discount, He's going to be paying with his own money during the IPO. He's going to be getting less money because he's going to be left with less shares. I hope that was clear. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible, but these are complex issues. But essentially what it means that Vlad, as specifically as a human being and every other existing shareholder of Robinhood, had a vested interest in killing the GME thing as fast as possible so they can raise as little as possible of this emergency funding. Now, I'm not saying that they intentionally did it to avoid emergency funding. I'm not saying there was a foul play here by no means. I'm just saying that it creates a conflict of interest that needed to be disclosed. Not to mention the fact that Vlad and Robin Hood 
are actual brokers, which means that they probably, I'm assuming, I don't know this firsthand, but as a broker, that's a company, uh, GameStop had 140% of shares shorted. So Vlad and Robinhood probably had quite a lot of shares lent out for shorting, meaning that Vlad and Robinhood were concerned that if the price goes too high, the people who borrow the shares will default and couldn't pay back the shares. In that case, Vlad takes the hit, Robinhood takes the hit. So he was trying to protect his own business. I totally understand it. But again, it's a double conflict of interest. He was scared that the people who borrowed the shares will not be able to repay them because the price is going through the roof. And he didn't want to take so much money from the emergency funding because it essentially dilutes him during the IPO, which cost him money. So these are two important conflicts of interest that needed to be disclosed. And yet I heard nobody speak about it. Not CNBC, not Vlad himself, of course, and not in that hearing, which is something I expected to see. And I was really disappointed that I didn't see it. That's an important question that needs to be asked. Why did you not disclose this conflict of interest? I'm not saying that you did anything wrong. I'm just saying that this needed to be disclosed. Now, again, this is just my opinion. This is not financial advice. This is just for entertainment. Might be wrong. This might be inaccurate. In fact, this might be the ramblings of a freaking madman. Do your own fucking research. Allegedly, blah, blah, blah. Now, I'd love to hear your opinion below what you think about this whole situation. Let me know and I'll see you guys in the next video.